to do it all as well. Finding those items that stand out but are still affordable means time in the van to hunt them down. And today it's a 300 mile trip to Paddock Wood in Kent to visit a new antique market. Right then, T, so we're in Kent and we're off to the big Brocante. Okay. Uh, it's a new fair. It's only been on once before, heard good things. New fairs bring out a lot of new dealers and first timers. Yeah. And that brings out the good stuff. Situated in the Kent countryside is the Hop Farm, which is home to the largest collection of Victorian Ulst houses in the world. It's also the venue of the Big Brocant Antiques Market, where there are a hundred stalls with dealers from all over the country coming to sell the best of their antiques, vintage and decorative pieces. It's only the second time the market has taken place, so it's a first for Drew and a great opportunity. Our bus is mega, isn't it? Is that yeah, just a, is it a... It's a food place. Wow. Coming to these markets, it's almost like having everybody here working for you because they're all out doing miles and miles, spending money and time, and I'm able to come here and just go that, that, that. So it really saves me an awful lot of time. That's why these fairs are so good. What have you gone for there? Bacon egg. And brown sauce. Brown sauce. Always brown. Sauce brown. Day, is it? Always brown. I never don't like red. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Great pair of planters. That's brilliant. Imagine the swearing they've seen. <laughs> when he started out in the trade, Drew spent years working markets like this and still has a soft spot for them today. There's nothing more fun than wandering around an antique fair. Bacon sarnie, have a coffee, do a good bit of buying. I love this stuff. Look at that. It's beautiful. Isn't it great? It's terrific. Yeah. How much is it? He's 90. He's lovely. Everybody does exactly what you've Do just done. Yeah. He's so tactile. It's, he it's used amazing. to be that high. Isn't he? <laughs> that's it, that's it. Yeah, he's <laughs> worn him down over time. Today. <laughs> There's this thing I kept looking at and keep touching this beautiful buffalo or bison, and it's just great looking, and I can't take my hands off it. So if I can't, somebody else is going to feel the same, aren't they? And it's 90 quid. I think I can get 180. I think I can double up. This modernist-looking bull was made by Rushka, a German company that was a prolific maker of lava glaze pottery in the 1960s and 70s. The finish gets its name because the texture and appearance mimics that of volcanic lava as it cools. West German pottery like this is becoming increasingly popular. It could be worth around 200 pounds. I've got to have him. You've got to have I've him? I've got to have him, yeah, thank you very much. OK, I'll take your money. I can't, I can't, I can't not have him. The benefit of antique markets is that they attract a fantastic mix of established dealers and some Drew's done business with before. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you. Nice to see you. <laughs> One stand just jumped straight out at me. I thought, oh, look at that. That looks like good gear. Straight over to it. It's a dealer I know, Sophie. Done business with her in the past. And this is somebody who knows what they're doing. I like your row of men. <laughs> do you want to be oh, part of the collection? <laughs> um, there's some great ones there. Which ones do you like best? I like all four. Yeah. Do you want a price for the four? He's a strange one, isn't he? She's got three mustachio gents on the right-hand side, then another guy in army sort of uniform. He's a little odd looking, I think. Not himself, I'm sure he's fine, but the painting's just not good enough. The other three are good, particularly the very small one. Give us a price for the four. I might duck out on him, but only. But, uh... Okay. Um... Five pounds. Five 
600. But 450 if you don't like him. <laughs> I've been buying Oakley blokes on canvas and board for decades. I love them, they're great. Yeah, it's tight, isn't it? They seem to be fetching more and more. They're really going up and up. Really? I'll tell you, what, I'll take those three. All right. Yeah? Yeah. Marvellous, right. thank you. I bought all three of the paintings for 350 quid. So basically, I'm spread betting. You know, I'm sort of going, well, if I, I'm going to make money on that one for sure, but I want to charge a little bit more for this one, and that one I might break even through. Because what I'll do, I'll, I'll group those on the wall as one in the shop. Drew spotted a few other things he's keen to get his hands on. Is this all yours as well? Yeah, that's all This little too. modernist chair thing here. 140, Drew. Is there anything about it? Eh? What is it? It's got to, it's got a makers, it's Italian. There's no age to it, is it? It's 80s, is it? 80s, yeah. 80s. How much is that for? 140. It just had an unusual shape. Yeah. It's not really the kind of thing I actually buy. No, I think I'd get 180 out of it, so yeah, we'll have that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. marvellous, thanks. You shouldn't buy single chairs unless they stand out on their own. It's called sitting well in the room, and it should look good from every single angle. That one does. What about this pair of chairs? Uh, 180. And the little table? 90. OK. And that one? I like that one. 120. <laughs> This garden potting table is French in origin and dates back to the 1960s. Made from steel, it features numerous layers of heavily worn paint that have been applied over the years. It could be worth around 175 pounds. Yes. So again, we're not making fortunes here, but it's a steady drip drip of profit. So far, the market is delivering exactly what Drew wanted, which is a great selection of quality items that won't break the bank. Nothing wrong with a bit of brown furniture? No. It's nice, isn't it? Hello. Hello. Can that be 100 quid? Uh, what's the right cost for it? Oh, I should think so, seeing as it's you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Lovely. That one, there's about 80 quid left in that one for us. So it's all adding up, you know? It's a profitable little day. If you start just ticking away, the hundreds add up. With hundreds of dealers wanting to do business... Nice. Drew's spoiled for choice. For sure. Yeah. How much is it? 50 quid. 50 quid? Yeah. Um, Marvellous. How much is it? What this is, it's a hanging pendant, like, for a dark room. So, uh, yeah, never bought one before. What do you say, 40 quid? Yeah, gone on. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Marvelous. He says 50 quid, and I said, oh, hang on, what was that? Did you say 40? Yes, deal. Uh, a bit of fun, and get it bought, 40 quid. Get it rewired. It's very individual. There's a proper profit left in that one. It's cool, isn't it? Mm. 65 quid. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Another good buy, little painted tubular stool, adjustable, original Rexine covering to the seat, which is a faux leather. You might remember it, old Ford Anglias used to have that as their interior. Ah. Right, yeah. Yes. Hello. Is this yours? Yes. Can I buy that? Of course you can. They seem to be following me around these and these little crystal table lamps. It's got a lovely colour swirl in it. Just a really nice, good one. Made in France in the 1950s, this crystal table lamp features a blue swirl and brass light fitting. Free from chips and scratches that can affect pieces like these, it's in immaculate condition and could be worth around 150 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I love that. Me to wrap it up. 
Drew's already bought an eclectic mix of walkout pieces, but his eagle eye has spotted something on a grander scale. That's lovely, that Christ figure. I really like it. It's French, it's got to be French. Oh, God. You can barely see that it's still there. See it there. It's really good, isn't it? We're wandering around the fair, and then I see this, what looks like a tin oh, yeah. corpus. And it's just a flat piece of sheet steel, very roughly cut and riveted together, that would have originally had Christ on the cross painted on it. It's completely worn off bar a few little highlights around the head, and it's magic. Bang, this is it. This is the find of the day, so I'm buying it. It's just got it all. It's quite dark, it's moody, it's cool as hell. What's the death on it? Um, <laughs> That's, hey. uh, what have I got on it? Four and a half. Can it be three? No, 3.50. Salvage Supremo Drew Pritchard is at a new antique market in Kent, and he's going great guns. <laughs> Thank you. Marvellous. He's here because he's on the hunt for well-priced everyday pieces, and markets like this are the ideal place to find them. Marvellous, thanks. He's praying he can get a good deal on this sculpture of Christ on the cross. Can it be three? No, 350. Yeah, so. Yeah? Yeah. Marvellous, thank you. Yeah, I've got to have that. It's too good. Yeah, um, everybody in the trade is saying that, yes, it is getting harder to find good things. See something like this tin Christ, just bite his hand off, you know. In the end, we end up paying £350 for it. Well, I think there is a... That there's a wedge left in that for us. That's the item we wanted all day, and I am over the moon with it. And as a very non-religious person myself, uh, I still find it rather beautiful. Chair here. Yeah. Very nice. The French. That's all right. Victorian armchair. Do you want to tip it up? Yeah. The back's not leather as usual, it's the yes. leather on the back. French. 1900. Something like that. So, yeah. Oh, God. Uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable. <laughs> Yeah. Must be French. Needs a little bit of doing. Hello. Hi. <laughs> I like your little chair. She you buy it in France? No, I bought it off of a French guy, uh, yeah. but he deals over here. It's just the right side of nearly... Knackered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I like it, I like it. Thank you. 325. Oh. Yeah. Want to buy that? Oh, thank what, you. can you do anything? Do three, if that helps. Fine. Yeah, we'll have that. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank Cheers. you. Now you bought it, I'll just turn that round. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that. French armchairs and this style are extremely common. It's nice that it's in leather, and for what we paid for it, I can spin that without that being a lot of money. I think we'll have to check it all underneath, re-ebonise the leg and give it a nice polish, polish the leather all over, and it should see five, five and a half. My job in my business is the best one. I'm the buyer, that's what I've always wanted to do, and that's all I do. But it takes a lot, and I have to deliver every day new stock, all the time, constantly. You always go out every day to find things, hoping you'll find something a bit special. And today we did that in spade loads. The market items are taken to the shop to get them on display as quickly as possible. And the added benefit of these pieces are that they can go straight on the shelves with no restoration. We bought this little blue and clear glass crystal lamp. It looks fantastic with the other two. But as a single item, it's a belter. We paid £35 for it. The threading in the top had gone. So we've had to redo that. That was an extra job we didn't think we'd have to do. But now, 
Look at it, ready to go, properly rewired. You can buy two or three to make a set. Very happy with it. Another great purchase at the fair. So we put the little medical sort of lunch table for your bed here, it's in the shop. Looks great. Bought for £50. We haven't put any casters on it, there's no need. I can sell that now in the shop for £120. And because we dragged ourselves all the way down to that fair and got up early and did the work, we're now going to end up with something that's got a small amount of profit, but the most important thing, happy customer. They come back. Remember, everything we buy here, everything that comes through the door, I've chosen. And it has to have my fingerprint on all of it. And now Sam and Kate have got the job of selling the stuff. But what I bought, I'm very happy with. Before the largest purchase from the market is taken to the shop, Drew's asked Rebecca to take a closer look at it. What we have here is a wonderful silhouette of Christ on the cross. Date is pretty hard, actually. This has been outdoors for a very long time. It could be early, mid-1900s. When this was lying on the floor, it just looked like a cardboard cutout. But now, hung up, you can see that it is actually a very good piece of art. The whole thing is in beautiful proportion, and it's a great art piece. So Drew paid £350. That's a really good price. He's sort of going to retail around 800 which actually is nothing for a wonderful piece of wall art that evokes mystique, history, and he's just beautifully done.
OK, I'll take your money. I can't, I can't, I can't not have him. The benefit of antique markets is that they attract a fantastic mix of established dealers and some Drew's done business with before. <laughs> nice to see you. Nice to see you. <laughs> One stand just jumped straight out at me. I thought, oh, look at that. That looks like good gear. Straight over to it. It's a dealer I know, Sophie. Done business with her in the past. And this is somebody who knows what they're doing. I like your row of men. <laughs> do you want to be oh, part of the collection? <laughs> um, there's some great ones there. Which ones do you like best? I like all four. Yeah. Do you want a price for the four? He's a strange one, isn't he? She's got three mustachio gents on the right-hand side, then another guy in army sort of uniform. He's a little odd-looking, I think. Not himself, I'm sure he's fine, but the painting's just not good enough. The other three are good, particularly the very small one. Give us a price for the four. I might duck out on him, but only... But, uh... OK. Um... Five pounds. But 4 if you don't like him. I've been buying Oakley blokes on canvas and board for decades. I love them. They're